Guys, it's been a long time coming, but I'm proud to announce that my hands are finally registered with the International Registry of Lethal Hands. This is the only place where your God-given gifts of danger can get the recognition that they truly deserve. Now you might be thinking, why on earth would anybody need to register their hands as lethal? Let me break it down for you. There are those among us whose hands are so downright dangerous, they need to be documented. Registration is a moral responsibility and it's a vote for the greater good of humanity. The sole mission of the International Registry for Lethal Hands is to catalog the most formidable hands on the planet. So if you know someone and you even suspect they possess lethal hands, do not hesitate. Register them immediately. And if you've ever looked at your own hands and thought, damn, these dogs are dangerous, don't settle. Go register. Head over to registeryourhands.com, fill out a simple form, and you're official. Remember, use the promo code jail to save 20% or just click on the link below. Bo Nickel was weighing in on Chimaev. So here, let's back this up. Bo Nickel goes out, he has a fight. Bo didn't like his own performance. Remember, he got up and he, he gave himself a thumbs down. And Shemayev weighed in, and he called the whole thing, the hype, the energy, the placement, they did the whole thing BS. This is, this is all rubbish. Okay. So Bo's got to respond to that, and Bo's response was pretty accurate. He just said, I'm glad that Shemayev is weighing in. I'm glad that he's seen it. I'm glad that he's thinking about me because I am thinking about him too. And if we ever fight, I'm going to out-wrestle him. In fact, I'm going to take him down. I'm going to ragdoll him. Now, I didn't just give you verbatim there, but I just, I just want to kind of set that stage because what do we got to do to get that fight? And so, and so often, and, and once in a blue moon, the strategy actually works. But Ever so often, you will get the decision makers to look and go, yeah, that's great. Oh, man, I, I follow it. I hear the narrative. I know they're talking about each other. They're both, oh, this is great. This is what the people want. And they're going to want it even more if I make them wait. Like, like, I mean, that is such a common concept that you've often got to deal with. And there are times when that comes through, you get a nice payoff. I am going to speculate right now. I do not know. But I am starting to believe that there's something to this idea of Tremayev and a travel ban. Very strange that I would be the one to come out and support the rumor of Tremayev and a travel ban because it is the second time that this rumor has happened and I am the one that broke the rumor the first time. You guys remember that? Hey, Chemayev can't come here. Hey, Chemayev's locked out. Hey, Chemayev can't get to the States. And this was going everywhere. Chemayev never denied it. His team never denied it. The UFC was never even asked about it, let alone did, did they settle this. But this was a very well-known belief. I'm in Las Vegas. I go to the Performance Institute. There's Chemayev training. He's training with Latifi. Took out my camera. I said, hey, you guys want to know if Chemayev can get here? I turn it. I interview Chemayev real fast. I put it out on Instagram. It was the biggest video that I had ever put out on Instagram. So I share that story with you because wouldn't it be weird that this rumor has come back and Shemayev hasn't denied it. The UFC hasn't even been asked about it. It's the exact same thing. Oh, and then I should mention when we see Shemayev fighting, it is in that part of the world what helps, which helps to add to the theory. And I just don't know whether it is true or not. But Shemayev does keep getting booked in the Middle East. And when I stare at that, I have to wonder, does that matter? Like, if I couldn't leave Westland, good with me. I don't like leaving Westland anyway. I don't even like to leave my house. I mean, I just share with you. Bring them to me. They fight in Westland. Great. Bring them over here. I'll just do the fights when they come to Westland. But is that the way it's being looked at? Or is there something that's putting a bit of bit of the reins, bit of a clamper down on Chemayev and the opportunities that he can get. Not for nothing, he was named the number one contender. And not for nothing, to become the number one contender, he'd be a former champion. 
I mean, history says you beat a champion, you fight for the championship. That's not an absolute. But history also says if it's a number one contenders match and you win, you fight the champion. Well, he, he, he teamed those up. He beat the former champion, and it was named the number one contenders match. I'm just sharing for you, so he didn't fight for the championship. I think there's a story behind that. Don't think you have to correct. I, I know about the hand. I know, I know about the whole thing. I'm just suggesting for you, if, if, full speculation, if something, travel ban, is hindering Jemayev and putting the belt around him gives you pause, just for example. It would seem to me that that would increase the likelihood that we could get him both. It seems to me it would increase it. And that fight, American wrestling has dominated the UFC at different eras. It's not, it's not right now, I'm well aware, but at different eras since 1993, American wrestling has dominated. We have had times where every single weight class was wrestlers. And we don't win all the gold medals. We don't win all the Olympic medals, America. So it would seem, once we've been shown how effective wrestling is, that if we could go find the guys that are beating us in wrestling, that are winning the gold medals, and we bring them over, that they are going to run rampant. But since 1993 till present, at least off the top of my head, I can't think of a single guy who became UFC champion. I can't think of a single guy that fought for a championship that was one of these medalists from other countries. And the reason for that, we are the only country, okay, there's three styles of wrestling, freestyle and Greco-Roman. And then you have collegiate. And collegiate wrestling is only done in America. And that, that is what the game changer is right there. Of the three styles, collegiate will encourage you to keep a man down against his will. And it will encourage and incentivize you to get up and get free against the other guy's will. That is the difference. That is what separates it. That's why I have to say American wrestling, because America is the only country that does that. Now, I'm not sharing for you that that is enough to put Bo over the hump, right? Bo's going to have to get him there in the first place. If Bo does get him there, he is more trained in staying there. If Bo gets put on the bottom, he is more trained in getting up and getting away. In fact, he's the only one that's trained to do that. Jemaya would have never worked on that in his style of wrestling. But before we ever get to that point, when we see very good wrestlers go out, it's very similar to when we see very good jujitsu guys or we see very hand heavy-handed strikers. You know, two of the heaviest-handed strikers we've ever seen made for the worst match in UFC history, which I'm sure you could argue three or four other ones, but Derek Lewis and Francis Ngannou. They both were so worried or respectful of the other. They just stayed out of range. So you got these two heavy punchers, and there was no punching. But it's not just them to blame. You want to see a really boring match? Like, you want, to, you want to know the match that will never get made? You want, to, you want to guys go in the Abu Dhabi finals and then they never meet up in the UFC ever? Because it was painfully boring to take two great jiu-jitsu players and put them against each other. Oh my goodness, if you ever want to see a snooze fest. And it's not as though wrestling's hands are clean. Colby Covington versus Kamara Usman. You got a Division I All-American. You got a Division II National Champion. I mean, it, it, it's very, very tight. Who would win if they did one of those matches? It's very tight. And they figured out early, real early in both fights, the squeeze isn't worth the juice. The energy that I'm going to exert to get you down. If I fail, I'm now exhausted and stuck on my feet. If I succeed and you get up off the bottom, I'm now exhausted and back on my feet. And they both just threw it out. And we had two great wrestlers, and it wasn't a matter of not finding out who was better. They didn't. We don't know who the better wrestler between Usman and Colby is because they didn't try. It's not a matter of they tried and they took my shot. They stopped trying. And I'm only throwing that at you because I think the bow really does mean it. I mean, just just for fun and just in a hypothetical, I do think 
If we find a way to get those guys together, which is the hard part, I do think that Bo's telling the truth, that his plan will be take him down and ragdoll him. It's just, it's one of those spots. You know, who, who the better wrestler is, it, it's got to be so drastic and so meaningful in MMA. You, you've got to be so incredibly much better to get the guy there, be able to keep him there. Oh, and by the way, even if you succeed, Five minutes later, the referee's going to bring you up, make you let him go. I mean, it's, 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 it's one of the things about our sport, right? It's, it's, it's one of those things. People love to tell you 80% 80, 80 of fights go to the ground. It's like a fun little stat. But they leave out the other stat that's important, which is 100% of them start standing up.